everybody. Hold on, let me turn off my Wi-Fi. There we go. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our Facebook morning live meeting with uh, with Henry. We're here enjoying our, um, our Sunday treats. Henry loves to go on his walks in the morning. So we're gonna hang out. Hi dad, hello. <laughs> Good morning Katie, hello. We're here with Henry this morning. Good morning Henry, what are you eating? <laughs> um, so Henry's gonna take a little walk. We have um, him under his favorite spot. It's there's an oak tree right in our driveway, and it drops lots of acorns all the time. So he's always scavenging around underneath um, to look for acorns. Um, I just gave him a little carrot to get him started, and we'll. Um, We'll just follow him around for a little while, but if you're here, let us know and we will um, we'll give you guys a shout out. Good morning. Um, so let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're up to today. Um, it's the last day of our May morning meetings, but we have a lot in store for June. We're really excited about everything that we have planned, so definitely stay tuned. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera so you guys can get a look, good look at Henry, but definitely let me know if you're here, if you have any questions, um, and I'll get uh, going telling you guys all about Henry if you are unfamiliar. Henry is certainly one of our more famous ambassadors. Hi bud, good morning. Oh, you love that carrot, hello. So um, Henry is a North American porcupine. You can see he has a ton of quills all over him. Uh, these quills help to protect Henry. They are just hairs that have gotten bigger and um, thicker, so they have a, hi. Good morning. They have a hollow little area in, in the middle, but they are just hair that have been modified to have special little barbs at the end that help them to protect themselves. You can see all of those quills. Henry recently has shed his winter coat, so if any of you guys have dogs at home, oh please don't knock over my coffee though, Bubby. I know, that would be terrible. Oh my goodness. Um, if any of you guys have dogs at home that are are in the midst of shedding. You may be familiar with this. <laughs> Henry, where are you going? Um, so Henry is shedding his winter coat. He's shed quite a bit and now he's looking very, very svelte and slim. You like that? Is that tasty? Good morning, Zoe. Good morning, Beth. He is adorable. Henry is by far probably our, um, our most famous ambassador at least on social media. He has his own Facebook page and everything. <laughs> um, and he is very, very charismatic and loves people. So so he um, he certainly gets a lot of attention. I know, I know, they're bugs. Yeah. Good morning, Caitlin. Hello. Good morning, Arlene. Good morning. Hi, bud. Hi, what are you doing? You got pollen on your nose. Yeah. Um, so these uh, plants that Henry is eating, he goes around and he nibbles on all sorts of different trees. Um, the, in the wild, these guys are eating mostly plants. They are um, complete herbivores, so they don't eat any meat or anything like that. But um, most of the time, they are eating leaves. And then in the fall, and um, in the fall, they will eat any sort of harvest goods that we might have available. So. Pumpkins, squash, gourds, apples, if anyone has a pear tree, you're <laughs> so cute. Um, these guys will gorge themselves on all those sugary fruits. And then in the winter, they'll be nice and fat and can get through the whole winter. Um, and then in the spring, when these guys first become more kind of active, they'll come out and they'll eat a lot of buds of trees, so little buds that have um, sprouted tend to have a lot of nutrients in them. These guys will need all those nutrients after a long winter of just eating tree bark. So, um, so they eat a lot of buds and baby leaves. And he's just kind of getting over his um, phase of spring where he really, really loves baby beech leaves. Beech, uh, when their leaves are really young, are really nice and tender. They don't have a lot of tannins in them and they're really yummy for these guys, but they are just starting to turn waxy now. So they build up this waxy coat 
and on the leaves and um, they become really bitter and these guys don't like them as much so we switch to oak and all sorts of other types of trees they switch more to the birches this time of year so he's on his he's transitioning they'll switch up their diet as frequently as every week in the springtime just depending on what's tastiest what's most nutritious out there so I see we've gotten a lot of questions. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Ricky uh, in Texas. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, uh, Mary. Does he shed his quills or does he have an undercoat? So that's a great question. So he has about 30,000 quills all over his body um, at any given time. In the winter, he does grow uh, more quills, so he'll get a more dense layer of quills. And he is shedding those quills right now. I don't know if you guys can see on his tail here, he has some quills that are in the process of falling out. Um, and when he shakes, if sometimes he'll shake um, like a dog shakes their coat, um, he'll shake just to make his quills lay flat. But um, sometimes when that happens, you'll see this time of year, a quill drop off. He does not shoot his quills. This is a really common porcupine myth that they shoot their quills, but they, he doesn't. They just might drop off because they're ready to fall out. Um, they do grow more quills in the winter. The quills are, again, just modified hair with a little gap of air in them. So they actually act as really great insulation. It's like wearing a puffy coat. So um, he'll grow more of those in the winter to help insulate him, and then he'll shed them in the spring to um, keep himself cool. So he does grow also a big, thick layer of fur. Um, and that, hi, don't worry, I'm not taking you anywhere. You can eat. Um, and that... You don't want to eat that though, buddy. Yeah, that's, don't eat that. That's witch hazel. We don't want that. You can stick with your, there you go. Good boy. Um, so he does grow a thick layer of fur that comes out over these quills and um, that'll help to insulate him as well. So that he's shed off. He sheds off a lot of the fur on his, um, on the underside of his body. He sheds off lots of those quills and that just makes uh, him a lot cooler for the spring and summer and then he'll grow back kind of a thinner layer of fur um, on his on his belly right now it's almost completely bald it's really funny looking um, and that's just a part of his shedding cycle hi hello good morning everybody good morning Arlene good morning Sue good morning Chuck uh, good morning Jessica okay bye <laughs> so when you guys ask about how we walk Henry, this is how we do it. We just kind of follow him around. Um, a lot of folks will ask me if he has a leash, and he does not. He's not very fast, so he doesn't um, necessarily need any sort of uh, leash system. We can pretty easily catch up with him. He's also not too interested in making um, making a too quick of a jaunt. He'll just kind of sit and eat where whatever he finds. He'll mark. Um, things so he you know is really concerned about all the other porcupines that we have in our woods around here you'll see sometimes he goes to a, a stick that another porcupine is marked and he'll get really um, intensely sniffing it and and interested in what's going on so he knows by the way that there is a pile of acorns back here um, so he loves this area because he is like, I remember, this is where all the acorns were. You can see there's a midden from some squirrels that ate um, some of those acorns. Hi, you're so cute. Yes, you are. <laughs> so he knows where all those acorns are. He's been there before. He's going to go return to that area if he can. Um, let's see. Uh... Zoe asks, how do they give birth without getting hurt? Are the baby's quills soft? Yes, so baby porcupines are born with their quills. Um, they are soft and then they harden up after they come into contact with the air. So um, it's usually about an hour or so after birth. And they are also born in their um, amniotic sac. So um, that helps to ease, um, ease birth. But then those quills do harden up after after birth they're also smaller and then grow from the point of birth so they're not um, as long as Henry's are but they are functional so um, once they are born they're able to defend themselves really really well and um, this is why a lot of folks will encounter baby porcupines in the woods left on their own they'll often uh, be 
on their own at the base of a tree. Mom will leave them there for most of the day and nurse them at night a couple of times, but they really don't spend too much time supervising them. Uh, they want their babies to learn to use those quills, to learn how to defend themselves, to learn to put their quills up when they're scared, and um, so she'll leave th that baby on its own for most of the day to do that. Um, so this is actually how Henry came to us. Henry was found in the woods as a baby porcupine. Someone, a well-intentioned person, hiker, thought he was a, an orphan and took him home. And uh, we could have very easily told that person to go put that baby back where they found it if they had given us a call. We have our wildlife assistance hotline that's really useful. People can call us and ask all sorts of questions about wildlife. Um, and in a lot of cases, we can uh, mitigate any sort of kidnappings from happening. Um, but they did not do that. And they unfortunately had Henry in their house for about six weeks. Um, and then they brought him to us after that. But it was kind of too late at that point. He had already kind of learned that people are really nice, will give you food, will uh, give you shelter, and not hurt you. So Henry lost a lot of his natural instincts to defend himself from predators. We don't have a lot of great um, faith in him to protect himself against a coyote or a bear or anything like that. So we did try for a while to wild him out. Um, we have a process called hacking out where a uh, an animal is basically um, treated like a wild animal and we act like a predator to kind of try to get them to fear us a little bit more. So we'll clap our hands, we'll stomp our feet, we'll try to make ourselves as scary as we can to kind of encourage them to have that instinctive fear response and learn how to be a wild animal and avoid predators. But Henry never really bought it. He would um, like open the door to his cage for us. He'd want to come and sit in our laps. He did a lot of really cute things that told us, yeah, I'm not really ready to be a wild animal. So after about six months of trying to make him wild again, we adopted him. Um, he pretty well convinced us that he was not a wild animal anymore. Um, so he kind of got domesticated, if that makes sense. Oh, I know, that's prickly just like you, bud. I think he's got some like autumn olive here. Hello, um, good morning from Chicago, hello, good morning. Uh, what would happen if you did eat witch hazel? Jessica, he um, has nibbled on witch hazel a few times and in the wild they, um, they would obviously not have someone telling them not to eat that. So um, probably not a whole lot. The witch hazel has like cumulative effects. So um, if he ate a lot of it, he would probably get a stomach ache. And um, it would just, if you guys can see how bare his tummy is right now. <laughs> That's because he shed a lot of that undercoat. Um, and it will grow back, but he looks really goofy. Um, so in the wild, obviously, there would be no one telling him not to eat that. They go by taste. They um, go by, like, the texture of the leaves, the taste of the leaves, the smell. So um, if he ate some, he would just kind of feel sick and probably learn not to eat that. But he, of course, has lived with us for a long time. So we often have to tell him, no, 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 no witch hazel for you. It'll make your tummy hurt. Um, and then if he ate enough of it, it would probably do a lot of damage. But we never really let him. We don't leave him unsupervised. I don't know if you guys can see, he looks really silly right now. He has totally lost that undercoat behind his ears, all bald, um, and it will grow back. He's not sick or anything. The first year that we had him and he started doing this though, I remember um, our a previous education coordinator and I were really concerned about, um, about him. We thought he had mange. We had never experienced a porcupine's natural like shedding before. And we were very concerned. We, gave, we tried giving him a bath. We tried brushing him. We really were very concerned. We did all sorts of skin scraping um, to see if he had mites or anything. And then he grew it back. And after a while, we were like, oh, that's just, that's just normal. But we had never had a captive porcupine before so we didn't know how the process usually goes of them shedding it was really funny uh good morning Kristen. good morning esther good morning rose good morning doris uh amanda asks how do i pick him up without getting hurt that's a great question so um so we have some leather gloves that are um over over on the other side of this bush here, but um, basically you just scoop him up under the belly. He's really good about this. He'll usually just kind of um, hold on and 
we'll scoop him up under his tummy and with the leather gloves on he doesn't usually get any quills in us um, there are no quills on his tummy so um, we usually will just try to scoop him up underneath there kind of like picking up a little um, uh, any other like a little cat or something um, so we have big leather gloves and those protect us for the most part and then the quills really don't do much if you don't come into contact with them so you're just getting yourself all tucked away in here yeah uh, David Broder asks how does Henry mark so Henry will usually walk over something um, like a stick or a branch or a log and pee on it that's how these guys mark their territory sometimes you'll see his tail do a little wiggle um, but it's kind of like a dog lifting their legs except they usually walk over something and in the wild it would be like a um, a branch or something like that so they'll just run their whole tail over it and they have a bunch of scent glands back there a bunch of oil glands and then they'll also pee on things to make sure everybody knows that they were there hi um just so you guys are aware all of our videos do have a donate button on them so if you appreciate um the content and you uh wanted to give a donation we would greatly appreciate it um all of the proceeds go back to taking care of these guys making sure they're well fed well cared for um and we really appreciate it it's prickly in there you got yourself all tangled up where are you going hi what's this hello i see some raspberry over here you should come eat that yeah it's prickly like you what are you doing <laughs> He says, I'm a wild porcupine. I'm in my element. Hello. How long do they live and what does he weigh, says Mary. Um, so porcupines live to be about five or six in the wild and then they, um, they can live a lot longer in captivity. So he is about, hi, he's about five right now. He was probably born five years ago in the, in the, um, in the spring. And then they will usually live quite a bit longer than that in captivity so they might live to be um, into their 20s there's a um, a porcupine a famous porcupine at the Museum of Science in Boston named Cooper who is 32 which is just nutty just crazy to think that he could live that long Henry where are you going <laughs> Um, and then he weighs probably right now about 11 pounds. Um, he has definitely slimmed down for the spring and in the winter he can pack on a lot more fat and he can get up to like 13 pounds, 14 pounds. But, um, but right now he's probably at his slimmest and he's probably around like 11, 12 pounds right now. Hi buddy. I could tell you in grams, he's like 6,500 grams. Hi, where are you going? Yeah, uh, let's see. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Uncle David. <laughs> porcupine, yeah. So we actually will often call Henry a ham or a pork um, because of the porcupine name. I know, Jessica, He we do this like most of the time in the morning we take little walks with him it is very sweet just to watch him explore um, and get around he's so sweet um, Ryan says he saw one crossing the street the other day in York Maine so that is actually close to where we are we are in Cape Nettick um, right up near Mount Agamenticus and there are lots of porcupines around here the um, the forest type that we have around here is really nice for porcupines. It has a lot of variety in trees and brushes and all sorts of things and in um, and the mountain has a lot of nice shelter for them. Um, they really like to spend the winters in like rocky dens so we have a ton of porcupines around here. We also have a lot of hemlock trees and hemlocks are a, um, a coniferous tree that helps these guys get through the winter they really primarily eat the bark of hemlocks during the winter so we have a bunch of hemlock in our area and they um, they do a lot to sustain our porcupines on the mountain um, but also just the variety of trees means they always have something available to eat so uh, we have a lot of porcupines around us here they call it like porcupine mountain and Henry has a couple of um, a couple of girlfriends that come and visit him every so often um, there is a wild porcupine that definitely on our campus that lives somewhere um, we in the winter will often see little porcupine tracks all around in the snow around here so 
they are numerous and they are um, everywhere. Good morning, Don from Maine. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, and they do often get hit by cars crossing roads. They're very slow, especially at night or when the uh, light is not good. They can blend in really well. They um, are usually very, very dark and hard to see. So you often do get them hit by cars, especially in the winter. They'll go to the roads to lick up salt off the side of the road. Um, their diets in the wild are naturally really reduced in sodium and so in the in the winter when they are kind of sodium deficient they'll go to the sides of the rows to lick up salt and um, that often can put them at risk for a vehicle collision so uh, definitely important to make sure we keep an eye out for them let them cross they are very very slow movers so uh, good morning Andy in Florida good morning Rose <laughs> Good morning, Chuck. So Chuck, he is going to, in the wild, normally these guys do live up in the canopy of trees. We don't get to see them on the ground too much this time of year. They're usually up there. Um, in the winter, they come down and kind of live in little rocky dens. But for most of the year, they're up in the trees. And it can make them pretty tricky to spot. That's our, uh, br our broadwing hawk, Gracie, by the way. She is very excited. Um, that it's such a beautiful clear day out. She's looking up at the sky, kind of calling to friends, other broadwing hawks that might be migrating through or um, living in the area. So that's who you're hearing making all that noise. We have a lot of really good talkers here at the center. A lot of our animals like to make different sounds. Uh, Henry will often be crying about something. He'll go, hmm, 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 when he doesn't have, um, enough attention or if he wants to go on a walk uh, and then yes Chuck they do sleep up in trees too they uh, they will balance themselves up in the tree and, and eat up there they're very peaceful creatures a lot of folks think that these guys will like attack their dogs or something like that but they really aren't very interested in hurting anybody they're just gonna kind of mind their own business eat sleep um, and then if something comes up to them to prey on them they will use their quills to defend themselves but they can't throw their quills they're not going to attack anything they're very gentle animals um they're pacifists yeah what are you doing you got something good there huh um yeah he does have a very cute little hairdo um victoria good morning rose in maine good morning cricket um have any of you ever gotten quilled how do you how do you gain their trust? Yeah, so uh, Henry honestly was really easy to get to trust us. He already had the predisposition of like a domestic animal who trusts people, who um, who wants to be with you. Uh, he really loves food, so anybody who had food would uh, immediately be a friend. So that's kind of why he's with us, because he's too trusting. So it wasn't that hard to gain his trust. Um, he has accidentally gotten a quill in me before, like in my arm when I picked him up uh, just from like the side of him, but he's never intentionally quilled everybody. And we're really careful about, um, sometimes if he gets grumpy or angry, he'll put his quills up and we just, when that happens, we give him a space and we don't go near him and try to make sure he knows that we're not gonna try to like harass him or anything. But he um, he's really sweet and he, uh, was really quick to and easy to train just because he loves food so much. I don't know if any of you guys have food motivated animals at home, but they'll do anything for food. And um, so Henry will very, he very easily target trained. That's what we call it when we basically have them follow a treat around and do things uh, for that treat. So he'll go right into his crate on programs. He'll sit and eat um, really easy, easy peasy. Um, and yeah, so I did try to give him a bath. We were uh, concerned that he had some sort of a skin thing going on because he lost all his fur at once and we hadn't previously uh, experienced how fast porcupines shed. It's like in a week and then all of a sudden they're this beautiful svelte animal. So we tried and it did, he did not like it, but he quickly forgave us. Yeah. And I just, um, when I did get quilled in the arm, it's not a big deal. It usually doesn't go in too far if it's an accident like that. Um, and you just pull it out 
with your fi with your fingers, but uh, an animal in the wild who doesn't have opposable thumbs, that would be really bad, right? They'd have to get it out some other way. They might chew it out. They might not be able to get it out, and then it travels into their skin further. So, um, so getting quilled for a human with opposable thumbs is not as bad, definitely. Yeah, food. That's what we do to gain their trust. <laughs> Good morning, Michelle. Uh, good morning, Jessica. They do not hibernate. They are active all winter long. Um, and they are actually more uh, one of the more active animals that you might see in the winter. So they're really easy to track in the winter. They, um, they leave very distinctive tracks that look like a snake kind of just came through and it's basically their tail wiping the snow around. Um, so they will leave very distinctive tracks and um, and are pretty active in the winter. They'll come down from their, the tops of the trees that don't have any leaves on them anymore and they'll, uh, they'll den up in like the hollowed out roots of trees or in rocky dens or something like that. Um, so they are pretty active in the winter and they are primarily subsisting on um, the bark of conifers. So the bark of trees like hemlocks or pines. And um, that doesn't provide a ton of nutrition. They do lose a lot of fat in the winter. So they put on a lot of fat in the fall, eating all of those sugary, carby goods, like um, pumpkins and apples and squash and pears and things. And then they lose it slowly throughout the winter. And if they time it right, then they have enough to get them through. So they're usually pretty trim when they, when they emerge in the springtime. Uh, Yes, yeah, Zoe, it is hard to see them being hit by cars. It's because they're so slow, they're dark, they, um, they're they active at night when it's harder to see people. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys all of these quills that Henry has since his back is turned to you. Um, you can see he has a ton of quills that are um, white primarily and then have a dark tip to them. Oh, that one just fell out, Henry. So this is how you know he's shedding when they just come out like that. Um, I didn't pull on that at all. But so they have this white, um, this white shaft and then um, a brown tip. So that's why they appear mostly brown. And um, really only right now when he's kind of shedding, can you see the white to them? And then um, the tip of them is really very, very pointed and barbed. It's not a barb as in like a, a barb from like a burr plant or anything. It's more like a Christmas tree. So see if I can get my camera to focus on that. So uh, that, hi, it's too close. But um, that little barb goes right into the skin and it can't really come out backwards because all of the cells in it are kind of only in one direction. It doesn't come out of the skin too easily. So um, that is the basic structure of a quill. Um, and these have been used for, um, by many cultures as like beads and um, needles. So because of their structure as a hollow point, they will, um, they will make good beads or needles. You can see he dropped quills just sitting here. Um, let's see. Do you spay or neuter the animals kept as ambassadors? So uh, not usually. The birds... It's not really something that's possible. The, uh, the mammals, you can, but unless you're planning on like keeping them with another member of their species, we would not usually do it. Um, we did do it with our squirrel, Skeeter, uh, because they, he had a neurological issue that made him non-releasable, and um, he was a young, young little squirrel when that happened to him. And we didn't want him to become like aggressive over time. He was going to have to stay with us for the rest of his life, but we didn't want him to become like aggressive or um, anything like that. So we did neuter him. Um, and there is always the poss there was always the possibility that he might get a roommate, a girlfriend, or something. So um, it's a lot easier to neuter than to spay. And so we did neuter Skeeter, but Henry probably won't ever want a girlfriend or need a girlfriend because in the wild they usually are pretty solitary animals and we give Henry plenty of attention so um, so we have not done that to him and sometimes I wish we had because he marks everywhere in his enclosure and it's a little messy and gross uh, but uh, it helps to keep them um, you know active and um, helps to keep them at a good weight so 
um, it's very uh, it's very rare that we would do that let's see good morning Naomi in Rhode Island how does Henry release his quills if it attacked does it hurt him so uh, they really don't release their quills their quills have to go into the skin of a predator and then get pulled out from the predators end. they don't release them in any way um, but when they raise them up when they're showing them off when they're like arch their backs and their quills are raised up the little ligaments that attach the quills into the skin become really fragile and brittle and so they break really really easily so when an animal's face comes in to try to bite them it pushes down on those quills and it breaks those ligaments and then they easily get pulled out um, but they don't release them in any way and then um, it doesn't usually hurt them if they just fall out like you just saw Henry's quills falling out it's just like our hair when it grows to a certain point and then falls out um, but then um, it doesn't feel good if they get yanked out it's like getting a, a hair yanked out but it certainly helps to protect them he's so cute Naomi uh, good morning Sarah I know uh, he has very very cute hands these hands are really uh, very well adapted for climbing so you can see those claws on him he has very long uh, claws they're not particularly like sharp but they are very strong so the nail bed is really strong and that's really good for climbing so if you guys can see this um, this pine right here has these grooves in the bark that is really how Henry is going to climb he's gonna get those uh, nails into the grooves of tree bark pull himself up they have very very strong upper body strength I know and his nose is so cute they do kind of look like a pig like a porcupine is a good a good name there you go <laughs> and he probably just dropped a bunch of quills doing that um, yes Jessica so the back of their tail the underside of their tail is quilled and that actually gets into the grooves of the tree bark too and that can help act like another um, another kind of base to get them back up to stabilize them so that that and then it also is very good for balance too so that tail is very good I know his little ears they're so cute uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if anyone has any other questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Again, Henry will sit here all day long. He found the pile of acorns right here, and um, he's going to go to town. So until I pull him out of here, he's he's content. If you guys have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. They, um, they're really, I love just chatting about Henry, teaching about Henry. He's such a sweet boy and he is happy to sit here all day long. So uh, definitely let me know if you have any other thoughts or questions about Henry. He is certainly cute and a great way to wrap up our month of May for our morning meetings. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another meeting. Um, and we are starting a new kind of series in the month of June. We'll still have ambassadors at all of our, pro our morning programs, but they're gonna be a little bit more um, educational and themed to um, to talk about different topics. So we're making some toys tomorrow, some enrichment toys for our ambassadors with um, with one of our Corvids that really appreciates it. Um, so we'll be doing that. We'll be doing some platter preps, some information about what we feed these guys. We'll be doing little tutorials on all sorts of topics. So we're excited for the month of June to teach you guys all sorts of things. Is there any talk about Henry beer? Uh, Henry had, or Edna had a beer. I think Henry had a beer. Or maybe not. No, because Willow had one. Oh, oh, you know what? It was Opal. Opal had a beer. Um, so Ryan's talking about our main beer beers, and Prince Percy just came out. Um, so that's probably going to be the main beer uh, CFW collab for a while. Um, Henry... I'm sure someday we'll have a beer. Um, I don't know if I would want to have a Henry beer. That, he doesn't smell that great. He's not like, he's not very, I don't know. The scent is not something I would want from a beer. It's a little musky. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think probably someday. But uh, for now, Prince Percy is available for main beer um, in honor of our little spotted turtle um, friend, Percy. Uh, Porky.
porcupines can swim, Asa. Oh my God. So if you look this up on YouTube, you will be delighted. Uh, porcupines can swim. They have, again, all of those hollow quills and those keep them pretty buoyant in the water. They're also pretty, uh, usually covered in a lot of fat. So they are, they do float pretty well. We have a little pond over here near, um, near our entrance and Henry one time fell in. Um, and it was really funny because he was on the rocks around the pond and uh, one of our volunteers was like, he's gonna fall in. And I was like, he won't fall in. He has really good balance. They're really good climbers. Like I've never seen Henry fall. And of course he did because I said he wouldn't. And uh, he pulled himself out right away and uh, you know, didn't seem too bothered by the water, but they do swim. It's really cool to see them swim. Definitely, uh, definitely look that up on YouTube because it's a, it's a delight to see. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to wrap up and um, give Henry uh, his breakfast and um, feed all of our other ambassadors. I'm not sure if they like it, Jessica. I don't know. Henry didn't seem to like the water. He pulled himself out pretty fast, but I'm sure in the summer when it's really hot, they probably do enjoy it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all tomorrow with another um, morning meeting of a different type and uh, with another ambassador. So thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.